This broadcast is the property of Codependence Anonymous. Reproduction without written permission from Codependence Anonymous is not permitted. Today's topic is or the topic for today is I statements in recovery. If you read the uh, flyer announcing today's meeting, it was not stated correctly due to an error on the host's part. We will take up the topic of comparing the patterns of uh, uh, recovery, the, old, the current version and the recently endorsed versions, the I and we statements of the patterns of recovery next month. Again, today's topic will be I statements in recovery. And to our guest speaker for today is the Fellowship Forum co-host, James K. Welcome, James. Thank you, David. Uh, I was thinking about today's forum, and I'd rather present the topic. That's the way I like to, to think of it. And uh, it'd be more like a podcast. Um. I made, I um, researched it and let me bring it up. And um, <clears throat> it was using I statements in recovery. I try to hang on to things that work and it served me well. In the beginning of my recovery, I had to take the bus to the meeting. So I got there early and I set out all the literature and I would put out that safety for safety's sake tent card on the table. I was told that CODA is a WE program, but that tent card on the table, it said, I use I statements when I when sharing. Example, I feel or I believe. I share my own experience, strength, and hope. No one else's. I refrain from commenting on what others share. I share for three to five minutes, keeping the focus on myself. I help myself and others by being emotionally present and honest. I let others experience their own feelings. I keep my advice. I keep my advice to myself. And I read that card every time I put it out. And it sunk into my brain, but I didn't realize it until this topic came up. But it seems like everything was written in we statements. That did not work for me. I started reading the steps in I statements, like I am powerless, or I came to believe. This made the steps personal to me. In CODA, I learned to speak to myself in I statements, like I feel instead of you make me feel. I found this process to be uncomfortable at first, but at the same time, it was healing. I felt like I spent six days recovering, but on the on meeting day, we came together and we supported one another in our recovery. I was amazed at how, how much change one word could enable my progress. Now I had feelings and I could finally speak to express those feelings and no one would interrupt me. In the end, I received the reward, which was the 12 promises. And in case you haven't noticed, they are written in I statements. We recovered together, and if it was not for the work of the members of Codependence Anonymous, I'm afraid I to think of where my life would be now. The meetings, the sponsorship, and especially the service work were my bridge from a person who today I would not even recognize into the recovering, growing, and constantly changing person I am today. Everyone comes into recovery feeling isolated, alone, abused, exploited, and invisible. How could I be so much of a part of other people's lives and yet have no sense of self? I need the help and support of people who walk their path and build their own bridge to a higher power of their own understanding. The other day I was reading a book that mentioned the African word Ubuntu, which means I am because you are. It was the people in my meeting, my home group, who encouraged and nurtured me 
into the person I am today. Without Coda, there would be no recovering James, but only I could make the choice to do the work and recover. I, I, when I was re researching for this, I went on um, YouTube and I found the conference uh, in 2021. And, I, and there was a few comments from Corinne that I wanted to read. Um, my statements is a first person narrative about one person, one's own lived experience. It is not an opportunity to advise, criticize, or make demands. Those are you statements in disguise. How is it about safety? I statements keep the message contained within the reality of the person sharing without accusing, attacking, or including others without their consent. What's wrong with saying you or we? Neither word is wrong or bad. It's that they often get hijacked into sentences where they don't belong. You and we statements can be inadvertently in, invite crosstalk because they are not sharer focused. What kind of difference does it make? I notice that I feel more comfortable around people who own their own story. It feels like they understand boundaries so that, so that I can relax just a little bit. In group conscience meetings and other service work, I am freer to, fo freer to focus on matters at hand and place principle before personality. I look on the CODA website and the four safety sake tank cards were, were not in the meeting materials. So I'm going to I'm going to inform the outreach committee. I think they should be, because they really started me off on a really positive path in recovery. And they remind and remind them to pay the pays to, to yeah. <laughs> and remind them it pays to hold on to things that work. I went to my home group and I said, Where's the ten cards? And we couldn't find them. We spent about two years on the COVID trail and uh, we were trying to put things back together, but we couldn't find the 10 cards. So um, the 10 card, what does it say? I, sa I read this in the beginning, but it bears reminding. I use I statements when sharing. I feel, I believe, I share my own experience, strength and hope, and no one else's. I refrain from con commenting on what others share. I share for three to five minutes, keeping my focus on myself. I help myself and others by being emotionally present and honest. And I let others experience their own feelings. I keep my advice to myself. And that's the end of my share. And I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you very much. Um, Would anyone like to, does anyone have any questions or would like to make a comment or share? Raise your hand. I will unmute you. Any questions for James? Any comments about I statements when sharing your experience, strength, and hope? David, I could make a comment. Uh, when I came to CODA, there was I, there was no me. I, I was uh, everyone else. I, I had no identity at all. So when I read that tent card, that meant so much to me that now I had feelings and, and I could buy my own clothes. I could buy myself a bike. I could buy myself a car. I could go out and get an apartment. I was married when I was 18 and, and my life, well, when it hit bottom, I wound up in Coda. And that was enough to say about that. But it was the I statements. And when I went and when I dug all the way back, I kept thinking, what was it? What was it? It was I. It was I statements. It was me finding myself and my own identity. And I, and I felt that's what CODA was all about. So that, that's my 
I, uh, I wanted to add that because uh, I'm so indebted to Coda. I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, hi, Gail. I see your hand up. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Gail. I'm a very grateful codependent. Uh, I want to thank you for this topic. Um, you triggered something in me, which is a great thing. Um, I went many, many years ago, I was married to a man who always used the we statements when talking to people. Well, we feel this, we think this. And um, thank God I was in therapy at the time. And I thought, how do you know we, meaning I, feel that way? Um, I didn't want him speaking for me, speaking my truth or what he perceived as my truth. And it took some time for me to really realize that where that started for me, where the we became okay was from my childhood, where others decided what I thought, what I felt. And it wasn't until I got free from the family out on my own and into many years of therapy later on to realize that, you know, what do I think? What do I, Gail, feel? Um, it reminds me of a movie I saw one time and the woman was asked, well, what kind of eggs do you like? Well, she had no idea because she hadn't experimented. She was always told what she was going to eat and someone would order for her. So in, in my recovery from uh, codependency, I had to start looking at what do I really think? What do I really believe? How do I really feel? Identify and not just go along with whatever crowd or whatever that I was in, I needed to stop and say, okay, Gail, what do you really believe? What do you really feel? What do you really need or want? And not let others speak for me or assume for me and me just follow like the cattle in the herd. Um, I am my own unique individual and I know what I think, what I believe, what I know. And when I am not sure, that's when I get to decide, hey, let me think about this. And be able to make my own I statements. I don't know if any of that made sense, but thank you, James, for triggering that me back to that place. Uh, I am not a crowd. I am not a group. I am a person with my own belief systems, my own I statements, and my own recovery. So thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Gail. And uh, I, Henry, welcome. I see your hand up. Hello, and thank you for the invitation to join this uh, forum. This, um, I'm Henry, recovering codependent, working in this wonderful program and of Codependence Anonymous. And this triggered something very positively in my recovery, something that uh, I'll try to explain it this way. There's a meeting that is quite rigid that I attend. Um, it's actually a daily meeting, and they are rigid in their crosstalk guidelines, not rules, but guidelines, as they always say, and the importance of the I statements and the not using we, you and we. And uh, when I was attending this meeting a few months ago, uh, there was a point where I was called out. They call out gentle reminders um, just to, to uh, not be too serious about it. But if it continues, they even use the 30 second as a, as a moment to speak of tradition violations, which um, at times can be a little bit difficult. But in my experience in, in this meeting, I, I was called out twice 
for uh, uh, gentle reminders of using you and we statements, and it shamed me. I felt very attacked, and I felt um, bad, and uh, I ended up leaving the meeting and said, I'm not going back to that meeting, away, and uh, after taking a few days, I realized that the person that I needed to look at was myself, and that I needed to realize that I have to uh, learn from this experience. And uh, I did that and returned to the meeting. That was difficult. And now I attend it regularly. And uh, I'm very grateful to have learned the lesson and to have uh, understood that it wasn't shame. It was just me um, learning uh, about the programming that I'm doing now the reprogramming I'm doing now and the importance of talking about myself and my experiences. And so for me, it is, uh, it's a meeting that a lot of people are very grateful for um, the rigidity that it has and the lessons in recovery of using the I statements and the other cross act guidelines that are respected. Um, I believe that it is a great uh, part of this program that teaches me to focus on myself and to allow others to focus on themselves. So for me, it is a great um, and important part of uh, Codependence Anonymous, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you for the topic, and thank you for the service in this meeting and for the space. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Henry. Uh, I was muted. Sorry. Uh, Kaga, you had your hand up. Do you still want to say something? Sure. Yeah, I kind of, yeah. I just want to say thank you for the program and talk a little bit about uh, I statements and um, to thank uh, James about the, I can't remember what they call it, the for the safety's sake uh, stand-up card and I can remember years ago putting it in the middle of the circle on the floor some of the meetings I went to they had we didn't have a table other meetings we had a table so we would put the for safety sake card on the table and I'll honestly say not not a lot of people really understood what it meant particularly newcomers I didn't you know I came to CODA and I was very angry and it was everybody's fault I mean, my mother, everything was my mother's fault. And then when I became an adult, got married and had a terrible relationship, then of course it was my mother's fault and my spouse's fault. And then it became my children's fault. It was all about, you know, what they were doing to me. And CODA kind of just turned me upside down and inside out and working my steps and trying to grasp this, I am powerless over others you know and I was giving them all my power and my life was truly unmanageable because of that and little by little I began to own my power and it was a very subtle gradual simple thing of just saying I feel I think and this is what I really need today and it is still very difficult for me as a codependent to, to do those things in a conflict type situation. But I had a great epiphany last week. I was talking on a meeting about uh, paralysis by analysis. And I had always tried to, my analysis said it's their fault. If they only, if they could just do this, why don't they read that? And I, it paralyzed me from really reading it, looking at it, internalizing it, practicing it, feeling it, and then trying to explain it just to myself. So that's all I've got, but I love this forum. I love so many of, I just love CODA. So I'm grateful for CODA. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to even share 
honestly, I didn't want to share. All of a sudden, I wanted to share. Then I didn't want to share. Then I thought I'd share. Then, And then I got confronted. And today I do 50-50 with confrontation. Depends on how safe I feel. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. I pass. Thank you, Kaga. Any other questions, comments, or feedback for our speaker, James? Henry, I see your hand up. Welcome. Thank you. I forgot one little thing. <laughs> Another great thing that, uh, that I've learned is this group also respects CODA literature and the crosswalk statements in their WhatsApp chat, which I think is uh, an amazing learning experience for me to see how they um, respect the guidelines also in a social media aspect like a, a WhatsApp chat where they are abiding by the guidelines even in a group social chat, um, which I think is marvelous and it teaches me a lot uh, to be able to administrate uh, WhatsApp groups. So um, I think it's a great lesson uh, to not only in meetings, but also in all our affairs, as as it says, to, to respect those guidelines and the uh, coder literature. So thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. Uh, hi, Ray, welcome. Hi, oh, good, I'm unmuted. Um, hi, yes, this is my first experience ever with CODA. Um, and already I am so grateful for what I've heard um, despite coincidence I was I'd been working on setting boundaries with my therapist and then we went one step further he suggested that I you know to think about what is it that you want as as a person I um, and how can you phrase phrase things and look things in that in that frame framework um, and I, I've just this week, I realized I often don't do that even inside my own head. I'll have other, you know, parents from years ago telling me what I should do or what I'm not doing well enough instead of saying, okay, I can handle this. This is what I want to do. I am going to do this. I am not going to do this. I will do this when I have time and I'm going to do this now. It's sort of a new, um, you know, I'm older, but... Uh, <laughs> I've sort of been doing that in my head my whole life and it's kind of an epiphany to me an epiphany to me to actually realize I can do this all the time and the fact that I'm here right now listening to this is so uh, amazing to me and I just wanted to uh, to thank the people who've spoken so far and I, I think this might be a really good uh, group for me to be involved with thanks thank you Ray any other comments, questions, feedback? Anyone have a share? Uh, I don't have a name for you on the phone. Welcome. Would you like to share your name? Sure. Hi, I'm on audio. Uh, my name is Lee, and I'm a grateful recovering codependent. Hi, Lee. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm one of those people that um, believe that using I statements is safety. And I'm in several different 12-step groups other than CODA. And first of all, I want to say I'm very grateful for CODA. Uh, everything always comes back to my CODA recovery. And the fact that I is a no crosstalk guideline in many programs, it especially is in CODA. And I appreciate hearing that someone in a meeting was reminded with a gentle reminder to use I statements. I think that's wonderful because it is a learning process. And I do go to meetings where um, there's so much we, 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 we. And that is not safe for me in recovery because it is about an individual recovery. It is about not people pleasing. 
not just falling into line, do 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 do, not fawning. But I can belong, I can get along, but I can still be assertive. I can have my own opinion on something. If a topic is brought up, I don't have to say we. I can say I. I get to speak my truth. And I can only be responsible for my own recovery, not giving advice, saying we in CODA, blah, 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 blah. No, saying my experience, strength, and hope. When I first came to CODA, et cetera, et cetera. And I have to remember it is being my authentic self, which is my goal in having healthy relationships using I statements. And I appreciate and value this forum. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Hello, everyone. My name is David, and yes, I am the one of the co-hosts of the Fellowship Forum. And uh, so listening to this uh, topic today reminded me that about the statement, something to the effect, everything I ever needed to know about getting along in life, I learned in kindergarten. Or and uh, realizing that everything I learned or didn't learn in kindergarten, I'm learning in CODA. And um, for a long time, when people were sharing and saying we and you and we and you and you and you, and I wasn't hearing any I statements, I would tell people, speak in the I, please use I statements. And as my recovery progressed, I started doing that less and less. I stopped telling other people what to do. I began listening. And it was amazing to me to hear people who had been saying we and you in their shares, start, when they started saying I, and what just like I started saying I at some point. And I learned so many things in this program. One of the things I learned in this program was instead of saying, you make me feel, when you do this, I feel that. And taking responsibility for my feelings instead of blaming other people for how I feel, what I think, and what I do. I'm so grateful for the patience this program has for my recovery process. Thank you, Coda. Thank you, James, for the topic today. Pass. Any other comments, questions, or feedback on the topic of I statements in recovery? We do have some time. Any second shares or shares on this topic? Raise your hand and I will prompt you to unmute. If there are no more shares, um, then I'm going to wrap things up. Last call for questions, comments, or feedback on the topic of I statements in recovery. Raise your hand. I'll unmute you. You are welcome. Yes, Kaga. Welcome. You pre-muted yourself. How am I doing now with this? Yeah, that, I hear you now, Kaga. <laughs> okay, I'm, I make amends. I'm not that. 
I didn't know how to work it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you know, I had to learn I statements. I had to learn self-responsibility. But like it, 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 everything for me in program, and this is an old timey concept, this swinging pendulum. So the pendulum was all the way one way for me. It was everybody else's fault, my problems, my situations. Then I learned I statements and I became completely responsible for the world. <laughs> and I was going to take on that responsibility now that I realized it was not anybody's fault. And so it's coming back around now, this pendulum, you know, it never stops. So now what I need is I don't need to be enabled. I don't need to be abandoned. I don't need the silent treatment. I need the fellowship. I need the intimacy of other members. That's what's going to help me grow in my loving relationships wherever they may take me. So, you know, I think sometimes you can go all the way one way, all the way the other way, but I've got to, I'm, what I'm looking for in my recovery, my goals, and I have goals today. It's not easy to, I can't just buy them. I can't just take them. I have to, receive them from a power greater than myself. And I've learned a great deal of patience because I say this a lot. I'm a hard nut to crack, but I am cracking and I am learning that it, as I've heard so many others say, this is a wonderful experience. Every single experience has been just perfectly planned so that I can reach my highest good if there is such a thing. Anyway, thank you so much. And uh, not to go I, 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 or them, 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 but whatever is in the middle there, this um, common welfare, this appreciation for others, no matter what their state of the union may be, not to jeopardize myself, not to put myself in danger, that's the boundary piece. And that's another, another meeting. Thank you for letting me share. I passed. Aye, aye. Thank you, Kaga. Anyone else have a comment, a question, or would like to take a share on the topic, I statements in recovery? Okay. If there are no more questions, comments, or feedback. Oh, is that Lee? Do I remember your name correctly, Lee? Yes, you do. Uh, welcome, Lee. Welcome back. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, I do want to share, this is just so, it's not just my recovery where I want to use the I statement, but I try to encourage others to do it also. And I have family members that are not in recovery that seek we all the time. And like my mom is in her, her late 80s and my stepdad, and they have the same email address. I can't tell if I'm communicating with her or with him. And she finds his name on her Facebook page and she uses we all the time. Everything is we. Well, how are you doing, mom? Well, we this and we that and we. And, and I love that she's happily married. But for me, I want relationships where I get to have my own interests and then I get to have my healthy connections where I have things that I do with other people. But I can still say, well, you know, today I'd rather not do whatever it is that you're doing. And I don't have to worry about being alienated and ostracized because I'm an individual and I might, you know, have a different schedule or a different need. 
or I don't order what everybody else orders for dinner, you know? It's okay. Um, and I think it's kind of like a 20, 20th century um, thing about being an individual. And I can belong to community. I can belong to family. I can belong with friends. And I can get along. I don't have to be somebody else. I don't have to people please. I don't have to fawn with a narcissist. Actually, I walk away from anybody who doesn't like me saying that I have my own needs. I say, see you later. So that's just my own learning. And I love CODA, and I love that I'm aware. And I pass. Thank you, Lee. Okay, anyone else? Questions, comments? Feedback for James, our speaker today, uh, on uh, and our topic today has been his I statements in recovery. The fellowship form re recordings, the, uh, the fellowship form is recorded and the recordings are posted at the fellowship form audio recordings website, the Coder YouTube channel and the Fellowship Forum website. You can find links to these websites in the chat box, along with our email address, which currently is com at coda.org. Please put a note in the subject matter that it is about the Fellowship Forum, if you are writing to us. Thank you. Okay, last call for comments, questions, feedback on today's topic. I statements in recovery. The fellowship form meets on the last Saturday of each month. Next month's meeting will be Saturday, October 28th, at 12 noon Pacific and Arizona Daylight Saving Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is everything except Arizona in the Mountain Time. Ma Arizona does not use Daylight saving time, saving time. 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Atlantic Time. And uh, I'm not sure what GMT is. I have to get that. The topic next month will be the I version, I statement version of the Patterns of Recovery document that was presented and uh, endorsed at this year's CODA Service Conference in Houston in July. Also endorsed was a we version. If we have time, we'll present both. But the primary topic next month will be the I version of the Patterns of Recovery. And there will be a slide to compare side by side the current version of the Patterns of Recovery with the I and we versions. Hope to see you next month here at the Fellowship Forum, where we get to discuss the topics of a CODA programs and CODA documents, not just sharing on our own experience, strength, and hope, but our feelings and experience about the CODA program. Share this at your meeting. Let people know the fellowship forum is a place to bring questions about the CODA program. If you would like to be a speaker for at the Fellowship Forum, please let us know. We are at com at coda.org. We'll close today's meeting with a reading of the closing prayer, which I will share on the screen.
We thank our higher power for all that we have received from this meeting. As we close, may we take with us the wisdom, love, acceptance, and hope of recovery. Thank you all for being here today, for your shares, for your service. And with that, this meeting of the Fellowship Forum comes to a close. I will stop the recording. And if you want to, you can turn your camera on. You can unmute if you want. And we can continue in fellowship. Did I put the tickler address in the remote? Yes, I did. If you want to get a reminder about the fellowship form, there is a link in the chat for that. Thank you again, James. Excellent topic. Thank you, David. Did you see it, Patrick? Nice to see some faces. <laughs> I thought that topic would segue right into the you we I and we statements next month. Mm. Hopefully, we'll have the that the. the I'm the, sorry. Uh, yeah, time. I'm sorry. To, the I didn't understand the topic for this month, and I notified uh, the uh, the uh, posters at coda.org with the wrong topic. I'm sorry, James. No, no, I, I think it was I thought it was great. It, you, because the I statements work right into the I and we at least it had one word it had one word correct. Well <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I got one word right. Um, we'll, we'll have to make a schedule of of, of uh, topics. Like yeah. stay three months ahead. <laughs> that way we can get some help around here. Well, we're one month ahead now. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, right. when I uh, send the recording to Jeff, um, I will uh, make amends again about giving him the wrong topic and uh, let him know that this is the next month's. The, what I told him for this month is next month's topic. You can unmute yourself, Henry. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm just waiting for uh, the space to do a quick. Uh, share about this. I want to share in the meeting. I'd already shared it twice. Didn't want to dominate. I'm kind of joking a little bit. Um, but uh, this uh, Spanish meeting group that that we started. I'm I'm one of the administrators of the WhatsApp chat, and um, there's people from different countries, and they have different ways of doing things. And uh, one of the one of the people um, started putting up. Um, things from other 12-step fellowships. And in our group description, it says um, that only CODA approved literature is is, is allowed and to uh, respect the crosstalk statement. And at one point, um, I've, I've been trying, I've been codependently very um, hesitant to try and say something about this. It's been happening for a few days, but I finally got the courage to do what I should need to do as an administrator and just a reminder that uh, only code or literature approved um, information can be put on on the WhatsApp chat and uh, this person got upset and they said you know what if this is the way it's going to be I'm going to leave it's a 12 step you should be allowing it so that this was a group conscious this is what they decided and it's respected in this WhatsApp chat and this is it's happening and, and it got to the point where the person said uh, wrote um, right there in the chat, you know, you should worry about uh, the people that send things that aren't from 12 steps. And I said, oh, wow, you're taking my inventory. <laughs> and I just responded, you know, thank you very much for sharing. But, uh, you know, Coda is teaching me that I cannot take other people's inventory. And I must, um, and I cannot control 
what others say, think, or do. And uh, I can only control what I do. And then I just put, thank you for listening to me. And the person said, well, I'm going to leave. I said, I wish you the best in your recovery and have a happy 24 hours. And that's all I can do. And that is really difficult to be able to, those, those, that position of trying to um, tell people, well, not tell people, remind people that there are guidelines and they must be respected. And um, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult for me, but it's something that, uh, that I need to do as a administrator or as a host or as a, um, even as just a member, if I hear somebody violating a tradition, it's, it's also something that I need to be able to have the courage to to speak up about. So thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Good to see you. And um, yeah, I hope you don't mind that I threw that slide up, um, James, on the I st- of the uh, tent card. Um, it isn't exactly the same as the tent card because that I grabbed the slide from one of the meetings that we do. And so it has a slightly a different time setting because it's uh, that card, that slide was uh, modified to support the, the uh, four minute guideline we have for that meeting. So I didn't realize that till after when you were reading it. And I said, all right, the tent card says three to five. So it wasn't exactly the same thing you were saying, but close. Progress, not perfection. Mm, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's impressive, this meeting that I mentioned. It's really, it's a meeting that newcomers have difficulty with it because of the gentle reminders. and But when I can see their recovery, when I see them accept the gentle reminders, correct themselves, and not, and it's a great thing to see uh, how a guideline that is respected begins to teach recovery. And it, it's, it, it taught me, it taught me when, when I finally was able to look at it in the right viewpoint, in the right perspective, that uh, how important it is to to respect the guidelines for my own recovery. Because if not, I'll just stay stuck. And that's one thing I've learned in this recovery is that if I don't look, if I don't listen and don't learn, I get stuck. I don't progress in recovery. I need to listen to higher power, trust the guidance and understand that there are lessons to be learned. And that's the only way I improve in my recovery. Thank you, Henry. Thanks, Henry. I didn't even know this existed, this fellowship form. I've seen it announced and everything, but I didn't know about the meetings. So thankful that you put that up there, David. Thanks for being here. And and I saw that we had a few more people from the Friday afternoon listening room, the Friday yeah, afternoon coded listening room. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let others know, not promote, I'll let others know that this, uh, this uh, exists because it's a great uh, platform to learn. And that's what it's all about for me now. I used to be afraid of going to these meetings and being, oh gosh, I'm going to be around all these people with experience and, but uh, I understand that it's all just part of the learning. Yeah. Yeah. Part of my learning is about me learning about <laughs> how, what I can do instead of behaving codependently. What can I do differently? What do I want to do differently? And why? Why do I want to do it differently? It's, it's, uh, it helps me to have, to understand my why. Why do I do the things I, why have I been doing the things I did? Uh, and uh, why do I want to change them? What's my uh, 
attachment. Why do I cling to these things that are no longer serving me uh, to uh, help me live the life I want to live now? And understanding where my emotional attachment for these old behaviors might come from helps me uh, uh, make progress in my recovery pro- uh, process. Um, that's um, ama- is an amazing program. And I really love the patience, uh, not just the wisdom of this program, but also th- its patience. The, the fact that it allows me to go at the pace I can absorb that I can handle. It doesn't push me or demand that I do anything more than I'm ready to do. It's always ready for me to do more, but it doesn't have an expectation or demand that I do more than I'm doing. It says, okay, awareness and acceptance are a place to begin. Uh, and, And that really has helped me a lot because in the past, a lot of the programs I was involved with were very demanding, were, had expectations. And and uh, when I didn't live up to those expectations, the judgments I received just pushed me away. It didn't help me get better. It just kept me uh, in my state of codependence um, uh, behavior, in my state of, of uh, inappropriateness. Uh, because I would become defensive. I would uh, become guarded and defensive. And, and uh, the, the, the judgments just brought up all my fears, of, of, uh, all my feelings of shame and, and fears of, of uh, not acceptance. So uh, this, the, the, the gentleness and the kindness of this program has really been such an important aspect for my recovery. Thank you for sharing. And I, I, I picked up so uh, in this short time. I've I've tried to always pick up on the sayings and how they can be incorporated in my recovery. But I will never forget about the obstacles. I have that present all the time. Don't put up obstacles. And then it that that's what brought me to trust the guidance I receive from my eyebrow. How can I trust the guidance I receive if I keep on putting up obstacles and keep being <laughs> difficult and trying to control everything? No, 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 no. And so that was a great thing that uh, that I've incorporated daily in my recovery is, um, well, am I putting up an obstacle or not? Am I am I trusting? Am I letting go? Yeah, popsicles. Yeah, uh, popsicles. Yes, obstacles. No. <laughs> new one every time, David. New one every time. Popsicles. Yes, obstacles. No. <laughs> I see, fixed that prayer that you that you see, know we were talking see, about the other day. See, David. no. <laughs> popsicles. Fixed, see, obstacles. No. <laughs> yeah, let me. Yeah, you don't want to hear that in Spanish. That's going to sound weird. It is. It absolutely is going to be weird in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> no rhyme or reason. In Espanol, I know. What can we do in Espanol? <laughs> we, had, we had seven people at the meeting this past Tuesday, so slowly getting there. I went to a meeting in Uruguay the other day and uh, and told them about it, so I'm, I'm, I'm spreading the word. All right. Well done. Well done. Well done, Henry. I, li- I like I like your um, your service. I like your service uh, process. Don't spread yourself too thin. Don't overdo it. Don't burn out. No, I'll be hosting this Tuesday. If you want to join, um, uh, Tuesday's a real busy day for me. That's is it? <laughs> I, Tuesdays is three meeting Tuesdays. It ah. used to be, you know, it's no longer Taco Tuesday. The Taco Teria in this neighborhood. <laughs> I thought that's is where you were so, going to go with that. I thought you were going to go so to Taco bad. Tuesday. It's so bad. The 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 ta- Taqueria in, in this area is so bad. I got to send you some. I went I went for tacos there because I I went for burritos there, and it it because I was desperate for a decent burrito. I have it's so hard. I mean, when I I, I must. 
eaten a dozen burritos in two days when I was last time I was in Santa Fe with green chili burrito, you know? The last time I, I went to New Mexico, I, I OD'd on green chili burritos, desperate for a decent burrito. I come back home, I go to the taqueria and I get a burrito. And would you believe it? It's burnt on one, it's crispy on one side, a burrito, a crispy on one side burrito. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. You know, how, you know, it's, you got to really go out of your way to, to ruin a burrito. You got to forget that you're cooking it is what you got to do. That's how you burn a burrito. Yeah. Yeah. I can, make, I can make some good burritos with some nice little chorizo and some pork. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Avocate, um, crema, guacamole. Si, sí. guacamole. <laughs> Guacamole, bien rico, pico de gallo. <laughs> there you go. Cebollo. <laughs> pico de gallo. That's just Don't normal down here. Too. Just drive a few blocks, you can find a Mexican restaurant. Probably a good one, too. You got to come down to Costa Rica, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah, Costa Rica. <laughs> Uh, it's supposed to be really nice. Well, I am going to be pushing for what are we? Where are we at? 2025 Coda Convention in Costa Rica. Give yourself a little more time. You might, you know, instead of 2025, shoot for 2026 or or seven. Give yourself. We'll do that then. 26, extra, then. Yeah, yeah, because uh, they they probably have already scheduled 2025. We were trying to get it in Philadelphia. We're still working on yeah, it. The, uh, I believe there's a bid in for 2025. Go go for 2026. Let's go 2026. I like it. 2026. Costa Rica. Jose, Costa Rica. Yeah. Unless you want to do it at the beach. Dos mil veintiséis. Dos mil veintiséis. In San Jose, Costa Rica. Par we'll call it the convention in paradise. Got to go, David. James, I'll see you next you. week. Bye bye. Uh, we'll, see you, James. Yeah, Good to meet you. Yeah, we'll be talking. I'll see you in a. I'll see you in a committee meeting. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Bye bye, hey, David, David. David, quick question: When are we? When are, when are we going to work on the 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 differences translation to present it to Coda? The differences. Oh, right. Yeah. I was thinking about the fact that I've dropped the ball on that. I've dropped the ball on too many things recently. Um, we got to, we've got to uh, get the form to submit. And where is that? Um, do you want to stay on the line while we do that? Sure. All right. Let's do some work on that. What the heck? It's all on there. There's a message in Where, where are you at, Juan Pablo? I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. Aren't you having fun? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> well, right now is the weather is great, but um working every day and working the program is, is a lot of time, taking a lot of time. We've got a, well, lead, a lot of newcomers. We opened this group about three and a half years ago, and we increased from six people to probably forty people. We do wow. meetings every day, seven wow. days a week. Send me the link. I want to go, and I'll send you the uh, link to the Spanish meeting. It's um in person. We actually open ah. to. Yeah. Well, ours is the first Spanish men's meeting in Coda. Only men for yeah. Spanish. Yeah, it, it, I, I would like to get the um the link for it. Yeah, I'll send it to you right. Now. I'll send put it in the chat right now. Okay. And we have a WhatsApp group, so. Uh, let me see. Yeah, thank you. This 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 meeting helped oh, I me can't a lot. Do it. David, got it. You gotta enable the chat. For you, yes. Oh, I love you too, David. <laughs> For you, Henry. I'm sorry, I I missed that. All right, we got to come here. I need to find. Need to come here and do a search for. Just because I'm a model, 
amoroso y amable. All right. Love, lovable and loving. Amoroso y adorable, yeah. So you guys do these meetings every Tuesday, you said? Every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Let me let me get the picture now that I can. Did you DM that? Put that for everyone. Yeah, I'm going to put it for everyone. 